Hello and welcome, my friends. This is Deliberately Creative, and I'm Stephanie. We're going to be working on watercoloring this little card that we drew up on the previous live stream. So if you have already drawn it up, go grab it and your watercolors and meet me back here. If you haven't already drawn it and you want to be able to color this in or watercolor it tonight, go to the pinned post in the chat or down below in the more information box for the patterns and templates page on my website where I have this lovely free printable for you. So happy to see people showing up. Please let me know in the chat if you can hear me. I'd love to find that out. I'm going to go ahead and play the opening video. Ah, there we go. So here we are. We are back. Hello. We've got Anessa and Debbie and Linda. Yay. So this fun little deer, what I did is because I did not want to paint on the card that I actually drew in that last video. So I went ahead and made that printable. I printed it out a couple times on watercolor paper and then I watercolored this one. This was just on a printable and then watercolored. What do you think? <laughs> I'm pretty excited. I was able to put it into an 8 by 8 frame and because this is watercolor on watercolor paper I did use the piece of clear plastic that came with this frame so that my painting will be protected. You can hear. Excellent, excellent. So glad that you guys can hear. So we're gonna get that out of the way. Again, the link is down below in the more information box or over in the chat for the printable. So there you go. Free printable, ready for everybody. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a smidge here. And I will turn on the palette camera. Yeah, I'm getting all fancy, aren't I? Whoops. Come on. There you go. Excellent. Dawn, hello! It has been a while. I'm so glad that you're here. And uh, RC Councilman, welcome. Welcome. Oh, it's nice to see new faces or new names. <laughs> oh, really quick. I am going, I, I just released this video on the channel today. And it's this lovely sort of winter night with the little cardinal. And I... I'm editing this video right here. So we will have this up probably maybe tomorrow, but probably Wednesday. I'm not sure. <laughs> but this really pretty pine cone, I was looking at this little guy when I did it. I don't think I did too bad. This one's about 45 minutes long, and the nighttime sky one is only about 20 minutes. So I'm trying to get them down in time. Let's go. Hello, Brenda. All right. So we're going to go in and I'm going to get this a pretty blue background. So I'm going to start off. Actually, well, I guess I'm just going to start off with really wet blue. And I should have gone ahead and just wet my background, but I didn't. <laughs> This was drawn on a piece of the Arteza watercolor post or watercolor cards that are folded. It is 100% cotton. It's a fairly hard surface. It's not a super um, it's not a super soft paper, which I like a little bit harder paper, especially when I'm using my um, pens. The pen was the UM155-24, yeah, dash two four, or two eight, dash two eight, and it's the point two eight uniball black pen. I want to get enough color on here so that it, it definitely feels watercolor. 
And it really doesn't matter if I get some of the blue into the green um, holly leaves or even on the berries. Or even on the deer. But I want to kind of keep it a little bit cleaned up. So not too strong on the antlers. Let it soften up and not too strong on the ears. This color is a the the blue. It's kind of the cerulean blue, I think. This the watercolors are the Windsor and Newton Cottonman watercolors. Hello Miss Mary. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's been a it's this is one of those I am working on really getting a lot of videos up getting people to notice the channel. I am so close to that 100,000. I really want to get there for Christmas. It's kind of my intention, putting it out there in the universe. I am just letting that soften up right into pretty much everything. I don't want to end up with hard edges where it's overlapping. So soften, 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 soften. I have a little bit of indigo blue on my palette right here. The indigo is the uh, Daniel Smith indigo tube. You just got your pens and they're great. Yeah, aren't they? I love these pens. I'm putting some of that in. I need a little bit more water. I want that to just blend in with all of the wet that's already there. This is a very pretty little vintage style. It's not, you know, it's such a uh, kind of an iconic look that I don't think we have to worry too much. Hey there. Oh, cooking dinner. All right, Miss Katie. So I'm just cleaning up inside those antlers just a little bit because they are actually going to be sort of a yellowy brown cream type of color and cleaning up inside of his ear just a little. Not too worried about it being Look at that. Ugh. I'm not I'm not getting all my words out because I'm I'm starting to kind of focus in on what I'm doing. Uh so nice that you guys are here. I am like I said, I am working on getting a whole bunch of content out, trying to get set up so that the YouTube monster will Notice that I'm doing all kinds of fun things. Oh no, you forgot to get cookies when you were at the store. Oh, you want to make Christmas cards this year for the first time. You know, that is one of the coolest things. People save cards like this. Hello, Leanne. Leanne from Western Australia. Many years ago, I, I used to go on to the internet relay chats. That tells you how long ago that was. And I would go into the ones in Australia and talk to people and have a really nice time. And then I, they'd ask, you know, where, where was I from? And I would say Vancouver, WA. I didn't realize that WA was Western Australia. I live in Washington State in the U.S. So what I did is I put that wet paint on the background, then I splatted a little bit of just plain clean water on it. And that gives you this beautiful little snowflake effect. The, those blooms, it just looks like snowflakes. So what, I, um, what I'm doing right now is I'm using this little heat tool and I am drying it because that stops the movement of the paint and it stops those snowflakes from blooming even bigger. So what I've got right now are these lovely 
crystal-looking snowflakes, kind of like those big, soft, puffy angel feathers. So there we go. And I'm just drying this pup off because we are going to move on to putting the first layer on the deer and his antlers and then going in and doing some of the greens of the wreath. Hello, Kareem. Welcome. You would like some cookies right now? Yes. <laughs> Hello, Gail. You've been enjoying working on watercolors lately? You had to move all of your stuff downstairs to your art space from the dining room so you can decorate for Christmas. Oh, yeah, I, I started decorating a little bit for Christmas today. Just a little bit. We put the artificial tree up and got it all fluffed yesterday, but we still need to get the lights on and things like that. I'm going to zoom in just a smidge here. There we go. All right. Ah, so cookies, cookies. Yeah, I, I love cookies. To get Christmas cookies, I generally have to make them myself because um, I am gluten-free. And not just because it's, you know, a trendy, fatty, fad type of thing to do. It's because I get really sick if I eat stuff with gluten in it. My son is the same way. So I guess I passed on a hereditary gene or something to my son. So I'm grabbing some of the yellow ochre, getting it a little bit watery. I want to go in and put that as a layer on these antlers and see how there's that color that was underneath. We are going to use that color underneath to our advantage. It's going to cause a, almost a natural shading to start because watercolors are transparent or super translucent. They don't cover the same way that gouache does. Ah, uh, Mary, yes, making your own cookies because of being diabetic? Yeah. It's 9, 12 a.m. Tuesday in Perth. Wow. Because it's 5 in the evening, 5.14 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So now I just picked up a little bit more of the color. And you can layer up and you can glaze with watercolor. So I'm glazing in some of this. I'm using a number four silver black velvet. And that's the silver brush company. Black velvet is the uh, model of brush. It gets this really nice point on it. You can go in and start making details really, really nicely. You can go in and I'm adding some more a concentrated version of the color. Look at that. We're just starting to get details on that already. This is one of those times when the watercolor, because we have the framework of the pen, pen and ink lines, we will have a recognizable picture all the way through. So at whatever point you feel comfortable, you can stop. Yeah, Karen, yeah, you're, you're way over on the East Coast. You're so hungry, you need to grab something. You only ate breakfast today, Gail. Yeah, well, I, I didn't eat my lunch until about two hours ago, so. All right, I need to, I'm, I'm pretty much done fiddling with those antlers for now. I might go back in and give a another wash of color. I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre, 
kind of mush that over. I want it to be mostly the yellow ochre with just a tiny bit of burnt sienna in it. And yeah, I, I do kind of mess the colors around on my palette, but you know what? They are dry pan, so you can. And now, where did I set that? <laughs> it's like, where did I set that? I'm going to use this little guy as, as kind of my reference. So you can see where I'm going to be heading with that yellow ochre. It's going to be inside of the eye area. And there will be some of that up in the ears also. A rose con polo. So chicken and rice? Is that what you're having, having Katie? Mark is making a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah, he's making a grilled cheese sandwich while I'm sitting in here doing my painting. Which is fine. <laughs> that's, that's one of the nice things about... Um, about doing this is that we all have our own time, time schedules. Mark is actually, he's getting, he gets up at, oh my goodness, in the morning, uh, before dark, uh, before, before it is light out, it is still dark when he gets up. Now I put that color down and I'm going to dab and lift the color out. And see how that's giving him some shape. Hey, Sue. Oh, we've got Heidi and um, Bridie and, and Abby painting along. Oh, excellent. Did you get, so you got the paint, the, um, the traceable downloaded then. Or did you draw it for everybody? Oh, Sue, I wanted to know if when you have a chance, and same for anybody, if you have purchased any of my books over on Amazon, if you haven't already gone in and done a um, review, I would love to have you do a review, an honest review. Whatever you want to say is, you know, is what you say. I am not telling you what to, you know, what to say. All I'm saying is please leave a review. Um, Amazon likes to share higher up in the, um, in the search results, books that have reviews. <laughs> so now I'm grabbing some of that burnt sienna color and that yellow ochre, making it a little bit more orangey. And I'm going to go in and put that right under the, the head where that shadow is. And now this line down here, that's the ribbon. So I don't want to paint the brown down inside the ribbon. So I do need to get a little bit more water on that. There we go. And I'm going to take that same color up onto this ear. So that's the back of the ear. And if you've got some of your background color in your ear, don't worry about it because it's just going to add texture. <laughs> That's the really cool thing here is that it just adds more texture. I'm going to put some of that color on the edge of this ear and it's going to end up looking a little bit darker because we are going over Yeah, yeah. Go to on um Sue, if you go to the uh purchase page where you purchased, you should have a um 
a, an opportunity to leave a review. So you just log in as you on Amazon, just as you normally do when you're going to Amazon, and then go ahead and leave a review. It, it won't show up immediately. Um, they have to, basically, they have to make sure that you're a real person, not a, <laughs> not a, a bot or anything like that. Okay, go chase down the go chase down the boy outside and get dinner. Well, it's dark outside. What is B doing outside in the dark? Little little stinker. So I just picked up some of the color here because I didn't want it to be quite as dark. And I'm just moving it over inside the ear. Look at that. You can move your paint around if it's not where you want it, or if you have too much of it someplace. And I'm using this to, to make shadow, to look at that. You can, you can do all kinds of things here. I'm going to pick up some of that burnt umber color and just mix it in. It's not really burnt umber. I'm, I'm not sure what color that is. I don't have the, I never had the box for this pan of paints. This was that pan of paints that, that uh, Mark got about four years ago, and he didn't use it very often. So I'm picking up a little bit of the indigo and putting that in to that to make it a little bit darker brown. Yeah, I know you're not a bot. <laughs> But the, um, the Amazon has to, to verify, I guess. I don't know. They, that's what they say, at least, that it usually takes a couple days for a review to be posted once you've, once you've put it in. What can I say? I just... I'm like getting into the details here already just because there are things that I like to do. Putting a few little dots here at the base of the base of those antlers. Putting a little bit of that that darker color in on on the antlers just because it helps to make them feel a little bit more a little more real. I mean, this is, it's kind of a cartoony picture anyway, because it is a vintage style. But, oh, he's making me happy. All right, I need more of the blue into that brown. And we're going to go under the chin and around the edge and then soften it up. But I want to say thank you guys so much for being here and I appreciate everybody who has been going out there and sharing the channel, sharing these uh, videos with their friends, sharing the artwork with their families, sharing the artwork with me on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook. It's so cool. You know, we, we've got such a big community out here, artists on YouTube that, you know, I, I try to, to be unique, but sometimes uniqueness is more of a curse than it is a blessing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm giving a little bit darker right over the the snout what that what that does is that kind of pushes the this part of his the bridge of the nose back a little bit
a little bit of a shadow on this side. There we go. A little bit more shadow underneath the chin, around the nose. Keeping it a little bit light. Just add more water to one, one of your colors to be your lighter color. There we go. Ah, B has a smartwatch with GPS. That's that's a good way to be keep track of him. Nice that he's got friends in the neighborhood though. One of his little friends from school, no doubt. All right. That is looking really good. I don't think we have to do too much more on the actual on the actual deer. I'm just putting a little bit of this darker bit inside the ear. Just tapping in some of the color, some of that dark. It's really thick. So it's not going to run around too much. It might migrate a little bit. But look at that. I am going to go ahead and get the green going on. Oh, I remember the days of walking my son to school and having the a little bit of grown-up time talking with one of the moms. We actually became really good friends and we have, uh, because we still only live a block apart <laughs> and our boys are in their 30s with children of their own already and we're still friends. So I'm just making up kind of a, a bright green and a darker green. So I took a sap green with a viridian or thalo and then added some of the cad yellow medium to one side of it. There we go. And then I can even pick up just a little bit more of that green and give myself a middle green. Look at that. So now I have three greens here. It really, on the on camera, it doesn't look as pretty. For This camera seems to be going a little bit orange. And so I'm not, not sure what's going on there. But we're going to get the colors in on here. And once they're on this page, you'll, you'll see them a lot better. So this is kind of that middle green. And I'm going to go and pretty much paint all of the greens that first. And I'm not too worried if I go outside the lines. I don't mind going outside the lines a little bit. You know, I'm going to try and not put the green inside the red bow area. But you know what? If some gets in there. It's not the end of the world. So just keep painting. You guys are, those of you painting along, I really hope that you are enjoying the process, that you're learning about your colors, how they mix. that you're enjoying choosing your own colors. You don't have to c paint the same colors I am. You know, this is your painting. And if you want pink holly and, you know, green berries, you can do it. I'm just being careful when I paint around the bow. But other than that, I'm not too worried about it. 
And even if I get it in the bow, I'm not too worried about it. But just getting a nice base coat of green on these on all the holly leaves, but I'm using my middle green, not my brightest. Well, actually it is my brightest. I'm using my lightest green. So that way I can go in and that way I can go in and get um, shadows and some depth in the, the holly branch or holly leaves that are in the background and be able to have some that are showing up on the foreground. Well, congrat thank you, Leanne, and congratulations, Leanne, on your upcoming addition to your grandchildren list. I think that grandchildren are the best. You know, we love our own kids, but when they start giving us grandchildren, oh yeah, that's the best. So just having a nice peaceful time. I truthfully this type of painting when it starts getting into you know doing the leaves and and all of that this can just be you know so meditative something that you can just zone out oh I'm looking forward to doing those bells too the bells are one of my favorite things on this But I love getting to do the holly because the holly gives me so much opportunity to play with the colors. You know, you get to get to play with making shadows and highlights. You get to See what this is going to do when you put the, the paint right over the top of, oops, sorry about that. I thought I had, come on. I thought I had my phone in airplane mode. There we go. Now it's in airplane mode. I need a little bit more of that yellow, a little bit more of that green. There we go. Because I have this one up here that needs it. But anyway, you get to see what the background that went over this does. See how there's background in this area? It's just adding more texture to my leaves. I'm just painting around the bell. So yeah, thank you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the chat right now, or if it's after the video, put it in the comment section and I will find it. I read all of the comments. If there's a question, I will answer. And I tend to, you'll know that I've seen it if you've got either a thumbs up or a heart. So that's my, my quick, my quick way. And then I try to comment back. If it's something, if you've asked a question or made an especially, you know, special type of comment, I definitely do respond. You get to go home for Christmas this year. Ah. You haven't been home since your dad passed three years ago. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is going to be our first Christmas um, since my mom passed. So 
so you know it's it's hard it's hard when people that have always that that have always been there aren't there anymore and I know that it's life I know that it's you know the things that happen we're all getting older we all you know we all have to face that mortality happens but oh my goodness it's hard I'm just choosing what ones are in behind and painting them a little bit darker green see how the brighter green stands up on top now right there that's lifted up this one right here looks lifted up I'm going to put a little bit of that darker green there and under the bow and maybe pull a little bit of it down the spine look at that a little bit of it here just a bit because that's where shadow is That's looking pretty good. Yeah, all the firsts. Um, not looking forward to all those firsts. It's definitely not the joy that you have when you've got, you know, the first Christmas with your, with your child or the first Christmas with your significant other. Those are, those are pretty awesome verse. This is not so much. Under the berries, down inside. And this is also where you don't have to be as, you don't have to be as precise. Don't worry. Don't worry if it doesn't quite make sense. Have it make sense to you and that's all that matters. There you go. See how I'm, I'm just getting these shadows and again, I don't have to, I don't have to be perfect with it. I don't have to be precious with it. If it's not, if it's not exactly realistic, for heaven's sakes, it's a vintage style painting. They weren't realistic. Okay. The vintage style painters and, and pastel artists, they were not realistic. They were, um, I guess what they call is chocolate box. It's the, the beautiful, big eyes, happy smiles. Nothing is, nothing is bad or ugly in this world. A vintage style. Everything was, everything was happy. I think maybe that's why I'm, I'm heading into that this really hard. I'm really hitting it hard this year is I, I want those hap I want the happiness. I want the smiles. I want the joy. I want to share that with others. <laughs> oh, Mary, a big wheel. Oh yeah. Santa brought us. A... All right. So the year that my sisters got big wheels, I ended up getting a um, lime green with big pink flowers on it. Pedal car, you know, that had the pedals that you pushed back and forth, back and forth, and you could zoom forward. And if you reversed, your pedals, you could actually go backwards. So I had my pedal car. I was the oldest, so I got the car. And then my two sisters each got, got a big wheel. And then we had um, like 
I want to say Chrissy doll. It was the kind that had the, you push the button in the belly and you could pull the hair out of the head and you could style the hair. <laughs> this picture is capturing that, that joyful, uh, happy feeling. Excellent. Because that really is the, that is the goal here. That is the goal. See, I don't even know how long we've been on. <laughs> oh, there it is. 40 minutes. Oh, wow. I was... I was going to try and do this as a quick, but you know, I start talking and then I start slowing down. But boy, I am enjoying this. I think I needed this. I needed the chance to get together with you guys. So are you looking forward to the pinecone lesson? I know that when I showed my sketches, somebody had said, oh yes, pinecone, please. So I'm hoping that others are interested in the pinecone with the snow. And if you just came in and don't know what I'm talking about, pinecone with snow, it's this one. And I think I'm gonna try and get this edited so that it can go up tomorrow. It'll either be tomorrow or it will be on Wednesday. So Tuesday or Wednesday, that one's going up. But for a little while here, I'm going to try and do a painting every day or every other day video. We'll see how that goes. You know, I don't want to burn myself out because, you know, when you do that, then it takes, it takes so long to get back into it. And since I really want to get that, that uh, silver play button for Christmas, I need to, I need to be very consistent. And if you share the channel with anybody, please, please tell them it is not mandatory to, to subscribe if only subscribe to channels if you are going to go back and watch more videos. YouTube does not reward you or reward me <laughs> any if we have people come in, subscribe because friends told them, oh, you've got to go subscribe to this person. They're, they're trying to get to their 100,000. And then they never come back. So please make sure the, the pine cone will be fun. Okay, good. Looking forward to the, yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Woohoo. A big wheel is a low three wheel plastic bike. Yes. Okay. A big wheel has a large, large wheel on the, here, where's a piece of paper? Okay. We're going to let that dry for just a second. I have to. I have to draw a picture of a big wheel. So it had a big wheel with pedals on both sides. And in this section here, it had handlebar and then it had a seat that pegged in with plastic <laughs> Oh, this is actually not too bad. And it had small wheels on the back. So it looked like a little racing cart type of thing. But this seat, because there were, there were holes, you could pick up the seat and you could easily move it forward or backwards so that you could reach the pedals. So there you go. It was kind of like a recumbent bike, but back before recumbent bikes were actually a thing. <laughs> All right. So. I am ready, I think, yeah, a little bit darker green. 
pick up some of that indigo. There we go. Make it kind of a darker gray green, just in a couple spots, right under the bow in the front here. I want this one to go way back. And that little bit right there, and this little bit right here. Yeah. See, sometimes you just have to up the contrast. That's the scariest thing with watercolor is that you go, oh, that's going to be so dark. And it's not because watercolor actually dries lighter than you think it's going to. So go ahead and push that contrast. Push it back. Push it back, push it back, way back. So I hope that picture of the big wheel helped out. <laughs> and they came in all kinds of colors. And in some respects, they would be very sexist. And in other respects, it didn't really matter because it was just a piece of plastic. There we go. See, and as my brush runs out of pigment, I can move up onto other leaves. There we go. You'll freehand draw this one. Excellent. I do have the video where I, where I walk through the whole thing freehand drawing it. So you are welcome to freehand. You are also welcome to just print out the traceable and trace it. If anybody wants a video on using a light board for tracing, I just got a new light board. <laughs> One of those little LED panel ones. Not sponsored, not given to me. I bought it. So... All right, I think that's good. I think that's good. All right, let that dry for just a second. Um, I am, okay. Okay guys, I'm gonna do a commercial real quick, okay? <laughs> so commercial real quick. I have my pinned over, over there on the sidebar is my um, pinned comment for my snow people cards. I have a set of these four snowmen vintage style that is available as a downloadable over on Teespring. And that is pinned at the top of the chat. And my Teespring li link is down below also for a downloadable digital file that you can get on. Let's see here. I'm trying to think where'd my, the uh, code for good through December 1st is DC. So I'm going to put that into the chat. D C save 10. D C save 10 on over on Teespring saves you 10% off of all of my uh, things on Teespring. So the cards, I have this set of cards. I have a set of the Where'd it go? I have a set of the Cozy Core style cards that you can download and print also. And this set includes the line art ones that you can print. So that's really cool. And I still have my Cozy Creative hand-drawn designs 
that you can print out and and then color. There's videos for every single one of the pieces of art in this. It's also available as an Amazon book and the cute and creative winter ornaments. This was last year's big December project. I did 31 cute and creative hand-drawn designs all as ornaments. So you can download this, print it out on cardstock, and you can use these as tags. You can also use them as ornaments on a paper tree, or you can use them as holiday cards. Really, really cute. And it's also available as a printed coloring book on Amazon. And the last thing, I am so proud of this. This is my desk planner for 20, uh, 2022. It comes with a big, every, every backside of every page is dot grid with room for making notes. You have the 2022 calendar. And then you have the full month already dated. And then however many weeks there are in that month, you've got a weekly at a, at a glance so that you can fill things in. You've got your month right there. You've got notes available for every single one of your pages. And at the very back, you have a place for your contacts and a place for passwords. So cool. It's got this lovely kind of um, matte cover, feels almost leathery. It's so much fun. I hope that you will check this out over on Amazon. All right, that's all for the commercial. <laughs> we're back. So there we go, zoomy zoom. We're gonna get the pretty bow in there. Hello, Miss Amy. Welcome. It's nice to see you. You want the ornament set, but would need to resize them. Oh, um, so Anissa, what, Anessa, what you do is they are, it's a PDF file. And so when you go into print, you go to your printer properties and you can choose a percentage. So you can say print at 50%, which would make them smaller or, you know, a lot smaller, half the size, or print at 125% and it would stretch them and make them bigger. Thank you. Thank you about the planner. I, I worked really hard on that. I'm, I'm very proud of it actually. It's, and then to have the, um, to have my little cozy mushroom on the cover, I think just makes it more special. I am grabbing a rose and a red, um, mixing those two together. And I am going to go in and get the bow put in. There will be a little detail on it. Once I've got the bow in, I will do the berries and then do the bell, the bells, 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 bells. Yeah, I think that's a, isn't bells, 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 a Edgar Grellen Poe? I heard a yes from the other room. <laughs> so apparently I got that one right. <laughs> now this, this brush might be a little bit small. I think I'm going to grab a bigger brush. This is a number eight round. Uh, yep. Mark is right here. He's in the chat. So Miss Amy, she's She's saying hello to you. Oh, he's kind of in the chat. He's also watching another show. No? Oh, you're painting. Okay. All right. So he's kind of in the chat. He's painting. I don't know if he's painting along or if he's painting his own painting. But it's cool no matter what. That's one of the neat things here. You know, guys, if you, if you want to watch these videos and do your own art, 
please do. So I've got this colored in right now. You can actually print out these um, print out these pages and use them as coloring pages. Use them with colored pencils or with crayon. I'm taking, because I want this to be more of a Christmas red, I'm taking some orange into that now. Brightening it up. That's pretty. Oh, that's, that's a very pretty contrast to that color now. Sort of Christmas up that color a little bit. Makes a nice shadow. And variety. <laughs> Better not be watching another show. Oh, you know what? He gets up so early in the morning now to go to work that he can watch whatever he wants to watch. If he wants to watch another another show, I am totally fine with that. Because he goes to bed so so stinking early. So where these little shadow marks are, I'm trying to put a little bit of a darker red. Not re I don't really want to pick up a, you know, I don't want to put a black or anything in there. I might take a little bit of the indigo to put into some of those shadow spots. But then that would really be taking it to another, another color direction. So I don't know. Oh, I'm like that. I... I like this. <laughs> it's like my words, words. Can I get words out? I'm going to make that much darker back there. So this is so much fun. Oh, golly. Let's see. little bit of that that red light is hitting this in strange ways I should have gone down with that dark instead of to the up so I will fix that Just have fun with it, guys. You, that is, if I can get you to understand one thing, one thing only is your art time should bring you joy and contentment. Even if your art isn't going the, the direction you want it to go, you should still be feeling joy in your art just because you get to spend that time doing something just for you or just to give you a break from the world that's actually I'm not going to tell you you should anything you know what that that's wrong I should not say I should not say you should anything but my view is Doing art brings so much joy and has the potential to bring so much joy that it is just something I couldn't imagine not doing. How's that? Even, even when I'm sad. Even when I'm sad, art 
and doing some type of art brings so much joy to my heart. I read a, a little meme earlier today that said, even if you're grieving, you can still have joy. So don't deny joy in your life, even if you're grieving. Because whatever you're grieving about or whoever you're grieving for would not support you being joy, joyless. How's that? I'm just lifting out some of that color now to give me some highlights. Ah, there. There. See? Just lift back to get the highlights that you want. And that's why having a lot of layers of color makes it so much fun. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, if you have to leave early, don't worry. This video is going to be up on the channel forever. So more than, more than happy that you spent some time here. I'm just getting a whole bunch of colors since we've already used all of these colors, that red, the rose, the orange. I'm kind of using those to make a very orangey red to go in and get my berries. Some of them are going to be darker than others because there's some of that blue background. I might take a little bit of the Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white to put highlights. If I lose the highlights, I'm going to try and leave little highlights, but you know, trying to leave highlights and actually leaving them. Hmm. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Just working it in. So this, this time of day seems to be good for my friends in Australia because it's the next morning. What about my friends on the East Coast? Are you guys okay with this, er, you know, early evening type of time? I know for out here, we're in, in a, um, you know, relatively dinner time. So it could be family time right now. I'm just going to pull a little bit more of that highlight. A little more highlight. I do get fussy with my stuff, so I have to be careful and not be not keep getting fussy with it. I'm going to make a gray to go in on that bell. It's perfect for South Carolina. Excellent. Yes, you can use a uniball white. You do not have to use the Dr. PH Martins. I just don't have a uniball white handy at the moment. So I am grabbing this indigo and there's some of that brown and I'm making a warm gray because the indigo mixes with that warm brown and makes a warm gray. And then I've got the indigo that I can use as my um, cooler gray. I'm going to go ahead and this is my darker tone here. So I'm going to go around just up on the very tippy tippy toe of that brush. Tippy tippy toe. I'm going to use white for the for the string so I'm not too worried about if I go over the string 
This part is down deeper. That part down there is deeper. That's in the center. That's going to go much darker in a minute, but grab a little bit of the, the blue. And just sort of get a color on there and mix it into that dark. I'm making sort of silver bells with just making up my my grays. There might be a little bit of a reflection of, of some red in that by the time I'm done. This is again where I can get a little bit fussy with details. I don't know you know, it's, it's just one of those, I like to push the details because being a pen and ink artist, that's kind of where my, my love lies is at the details. Time is good in central time. Also excellent. All right. So I am going to grab a little bit of this kind of pinky red. I'm going to drop a little bit of that in right here and right here into that push it around a little bit grab I think I'm going to use just some straight indigo to go in and do my super dark down there in the insides for that bell. You know how you have the, the split so that the sound can ring? That's what that is. A little bit more of that dark underneath of that holder. Under that edge. In that split area. Oh, this is looking so cute. And if you go too far with your dark, you can always use your, use your paintbrush and push it around a little bit and pick some up or let it bleed a little bit. The indigo is a staining color. So if it's been on the paper for too long, it, it likes to kind of stay where it is. But one of the nice things is if you are doing it on top of a lot of other colors, the other colors seem to protect the paper from the indigo just a smidge. There we go. A little bit darker. Right in that area. Right in that area. All right. We are going to dry this and see how it, it, see how it looks with a little touch of... Oh, I'm going to use some of the, let's see, uh, that's an Arteza white pen. That is not as satisfactory. I think I am going to have to use my bleed proof white, but you can certainly use a Uniball pen. I am drying this just so I don't run my hands through it. <laughs> The only people I've ever heard say that water paint, watercolor painting is difficult are the people who have never tried it. Indeed. Indeed. Although, I think that it's more than the people who have never tried it. It's the people who have never given it a chance. Because I had tried watercolor 
when I was in high school. And I didn't like it because it kept running away from me. And what it was is I didn't give it a chance to become something that I liked. So what I'm doing is I just took a little bit of that bleed proof white and put it on. This was a, <laughs> yeah, this is that MDF board that I had done a dipped painting on and coated it with resin. It was a coaster. And now I just use it here in the studio as a quick little, oh, there must have been some pink on my brush still. Yeah. Um, doing the, doing the watercolor in high school because I was a pen and ink person. That is what I loved. That is what I did. And I didn't, I really didn't want to give anything else a real chance. So I'm doing those little stars in, put those sparkles in. I might even put a little bit of silver on it to really give us that retro effect. If you are not comfortable you know, doing this with a brush, please use a pen. Just enjoy your process. Don't, don't put artificial limitations because any limitation we put on ourselves when we're painting is an artificial limitation. If we say, oh, I must do it with a brush because that is what painters do. Um, that is an artificial limitation and painters paint with whatever puts the paint on the surface the best at the moment. So just enjoy and do it however it makes you happy. And if, and if doing this with crayons makes you happy, do it with crayons. Crayons are a legitimate art supply. All right. Now I'm going to take some of that white and I'm just going to put a little pop on top of the bow and in a few spots here on the, on the berries. I had somebody just recently comment and say that they wish that I was doing my doodle gems still. And funny enough, I have been thinking about maybe doing some of the doodle gems, some of the actual, you know, gemstone type gems, because I could do it as a watercolor and pen and pencil. Is that something you would be interested in learning to do? A couple spots. And then up here in the eye. Because there were always big, big spots in the eyes. Nice shiny on the nose. Maybe a little edge. Very dry. The brush is getting very dry. But this is definitely giving it that more of that retro feel. There we go. And yeah, it's okay to use white. Absolutely. 
you don't have to reserve the white if it doesn't make you happy to do it. I am looking for my silver. There it is. And I can turn off that other palette. That's what I can do. We don't need that. Then you've got this one you can see. Now the Dr. P.H. Martin silver ink is waterproof. So when you do this with, with your brushes, if you don't feel comfortable with being able to get the paint out of your brush quickly, just grab a, a cheaper brush. I don't mind using this brush. I'm just putting a little bit of that pretty silver on the stars because it's like adding glitter without all those little micro glitter bits getting all over the everything or get or having to get um, the glue out to do the glitter and it just gives this pretty little shine I'll check the chat here in just a second. I've been trying to stay on top of it, but you know, sometimes you guys get going quicker. It seems that I've seen it passing, passing quicker. Oh yeah. If, if you, if you are in that place in your journey where saving the white makes you happy, please do. If you are in that place in your journey where you just want to get that painting done, add the white. <laughs> but I don't say one way or the other. I am not going to dictate to anyone saying that it's not, um, you know, it's not appropriate or whatever. It's I'm not putting my artwork into, into any contest, listing it as a, you know, straight watercolor. Um, if I, if I was putting this into any type of, oh, that silver looks so pretty on the bells. Okay. Got to put it, got to put a little bit more on. And just because just because I'm actually going to dry brush a little bit of that silver ink onto the antlers because it makes it look almost velvety or like they have a little bit of a little bit of frost on them. Oh, that's pretty. All right, we're going to take this tape off. You asked Santa for a specific Daniel Smith color set. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Be specific so that Santa knows. Let's see here. I'm going to actually, I think, take a little bit of the indigo. My brush is very pointy. I'm going to put my little signature right down here. We're going to pull the tape off. And see how we see how we like it. My guess, I'm going to like it a lot. <laughs> oh, and this was just taped down to that coral plas, that plastic corrugated board that's just the, oops I had I had an overflow or an underflow under my tape now I could get all upset about that or I could take a piece of tape put it on the other side of where that 
where that went. And because I have this bleed proof white, I can take the bleed proof white and paint it, boom, right across. The paint is not going to come through. Now what I'll see is a shadow. I can dry it and then put another coat. So that's what I'm going to do because you know what? That's how we fix that. And you don't have to fuss about it. You don't have, this is a card. This is not, you know, something that somebody is paying six, six thousand dollars for. This is a card. And I'm hoping that whoever receives this card loves it, enjoys it. And if they even notice the little fixing of the, of the edge, it's not going to bother them. Rinse my brush, dry that off and we'll pull off the rest of the tape. But that's how you fix that. That is really and truly exactly how you fix it. So you don't, you, and you can use bleed proof white. You can use acrylic paint. White acrylic works just fine also. Just happens to be what I have. And it just gives you an opportunity to learn something else. And look, boom, can't even tell it's there. Whoa, look at that pretty, pretty card. I hope that whoever receives this is going to enjoy it. Look at that shimmer, the shine. Remember there is that sale on my Teespring right now. DC save 10 is the promo code and it is good through December 1st. So you still have a couple days you can use that to get cards, tags, downloadable books, t-shirts, whatever. It's good for everything. And if you want print books, coloring books, the planner, that's all listed down below. Just click on my Amazon shop and you will get to my books page and you can buy all the books. And when you buy the books, make sure and leave a review. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>